boys and girls, it's Mrs. Eastman again, and I'm doing one of my videos. So this video is about Unit 5, Week 3. And so that's our next week in our anthology and our language arts program. And this week we're going to be talking about a lot of different skills again and some concepts that are important. And as soon as I go over this, this will help you be able to do your work for this week. Alright, so we're going to start over here with number one. And number one says variant vowels. Now, don't let that confuse you, alright? All that means is that we have different vowels that can make the same sound. And we've worked on some other posters with phonics. We worked on our vowel team poster, and I know you know from, from doing that with me, that we can have a lot of different vowel teams make the same vowel sound. And that's what makes English a little bit complicated. All right, so we have a U with two little dots over it. And that symbol just stands for, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you figure it out. And boys and girls, I really need you to participate at home. So I want you in your listening learning position. I want you sitting up with quiet hands and really paying attention with your eyes and your ears. And if I ask questions, please answer them. Even though I can't hear you, you're still supposed to be participating at home. Okay? I'd really appreciate that. So I'm going to say these words, and I want you, don't look at the spelling. Just listen to the sound of the vowel. All right? So I'm going to kind of cover them up. Say soon, tune, flew, grew, blue, juice, soup. Did you hear the same vowel sound in all those words? Because I did. Can you tell me what it is? If you said ooh, you're right. It's kind of like when you see something gross and you go, ew, that's the sound we're hearing. But it is spelled in different ways. And you will notice that in these words. And we did talk about this in uh, the video with the vowel team poster. And remember, you want to connect this new learning to what you already know. So we already know a lot about vowel teams. And now we can learn even more and connect that to what we already know. All right? I'm going to have you either chop or go down your arm. I'll do it both ways. And we're going to listen to each word. And we're going to do the phonemes, which are the individual sounds. So in spoon, do this with me. S, p, u, n, spoon. We hear that u in there. Let's try the next one. Tune. Ready? Do it with me. T, U, N, tune. We hear that U. But look, this is spelled with an O-O, and this is spelled with a U, and a consonant, and a silent E. Let's try this one. F, O, U, F, Lu, Flu. Um, that's the flu like when you get sick, not the bird flew through the sky. Although I could have that one up here too. Let's do another one. This time we'll chop it. Let's do guru. Ready? Put your hands like this, like you do in Haggerty. G, er, u, guru. Let's do blue. Ready? B, u, u, blue. Juice. J, u, S, juice. Soup. S, u, p, soup. All right. What I want you to understand is that we have different ways of spelling u. And in spoon, it's o, o. In tune, it's u, consonant, silent e. All right, I'm going to put a macron above that U. In flu, it's just the U. 
saying oo. So sometimes we can just have one letter making that sound. In grew, it's the EW. In blue, it's the UE. In juice, that's kind of tricky, it's really the UI. And that silent E is there to make that C make the S sound. And in soup, here we go. Oh, you saying ooh. Remember on our vow team poster, trout soup. Oh, you can say owl, the pinching letters, or ooh, like in soup. So, what I want you to understand here is that we have several different ways of spelling the sound ooh. I also wanted to review with you, and you learned this earlier in one of my other videos, that long U can say oo, but it also can say you. And in the word cube, it's saying you. Listen to it. K U B cube. So there's that tricky long U. It can say you, like in cube. Or it can say, ooh, like in all of these words. Okay, going on. And boys and girls, something else I wanted to say to you. If you want to participate at home, and um, besides just answering my questions, if you want to have a dry erase board, that would be awesome. Or if you just run right on a piece of paper with a pencil, that would be awesome. Because I think sometimes you learn more when you're involved in what we're doing. So if you can pause me anytime, boy, think about that. You can pause your teacher. Boom. And then you can get what you need and come back and start the video again. And especially this is true when we're going to do this part. This part I really would like your help, not only orally, but also maybe doing it on paper or a dry erase board so you can practice. All right? Remember, you can pause me. All right, number two. Other sounds of O, 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 U, and U. Now we just learned that these can say oo. Here in spoon we have two O's saying oo. O, U in soup can say oo. U can say oo like in flu. But guess what? Here we go with English again, our deep opaque language where we have a lot of ways of spelling the same sound. So look down here, I have I have O O, I have O U, and I just have U. But I'm not going to tell you what sound they make, I'm going to let you figure that out on your own. So I'm going to say them, you repeat them. Book, shook, foot, hood, could, would. Should, put, push. Did you hear the same vowel sound in all those? I know they're not spelled the same, but they have the same vowel sound. Hmm, what do you think it is? All right, if you said, uh, you're right. And that's kind of a hard sound to say. Say, uh. Now again, I'm going to refer back to what we already know. Remember how we said two O's can say OO like in school and UH like in book. We learned that on one of our posters. So let's go ahead and look here. In book, we have the two O's. In shook, we have the two O's. In foot, we have the two O's. In hood, we have the two O's. So we know O-O can say oo, and O-O can say uh. School book. Now look here. This is kind of tricky. We have O-U-L-D. 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 Oh my gosh. O-U can make three sounds. Owl like in trout, oo like in soup, and uh like in could and would and should. All right, now some teachers teach this on could, would, should. If you think, oh you lucky dog, or you can say, oh you lucky duck, and that will help you with that spelling because, gosh, 
Watch me. I'm going to do Haggerty again, okay? <coughs> uh, d. Only three phonemes. <coughs> uh, d. Could. But there are one, two, three, four, five letters, graphemes. All right? So we have to be careful here. We need to spell it O-U-L-D, even though we don't hear all of those letters. All right, let's go over here. Put, uh, push, uh. That's just a U. But guess what? It's not saying long U, and it's not saying short U, uh. It's saying uh. Put, push. And this is how we show this sound. It's a U with one dot over it, and that's the uh sound. I know this is a little complicated, but this is English. And the more you can understand this and learn this, the better reader and speller you're going to be. And so remember, you can come back to this video anytime and watch it again. It's always at your fingertips. All right? So we learned here that we can have many different ways of spelling oo and different ways of spelling uh going on. This is the part, if you want to, you can stop the, the video, put push pause, and get a piece of paper or get a dry erase board with some markers. You know, you can do it with me at home. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, are you back? <laughs> now, we're going to talk about contractions, and we use these all the time when we speak and maybe when we write. Contractions are when we can take two words and then put them together with popping a letter or many letters out and putting an apostrophe in the place of those letters, or one letter, to shorten them up. It's kind of informal. It's not, we don't really use it in our formal writing, but we can use it in informal writing and in informal speaking. So let's go ahead and look at this. We have could not, all right? I'll just make up a sentence. Um, I could not go to my school building today. Could not. Now, I can take these two words and I can put them together. It's not the same thing as a compound word. Compound words like base, ball, baseball, we keep both words and we just put them together. We're not getting rid of any letters. But with contractions, we get rid of letters and we put an apostrophe in. So this is something you really have to remember. You always keep the first word. So again, if you'd like to do this with me at home, you may. So for could not, we're going to keep could, C-O-U-L-D, always keep the first word. Now, these contractions are about adding not to a word. We can add other words to words, but we're just practicing adding not to a word. So here's could. Could not goes to couldn't. Say it at home. Couldn't. Now you keep the first word. We're going to put the end of the second word at the end of the first word. We're going to put an apostrophe, which is like a comma, but it's up in the air, where the O goes, okay? And we're going to keep the T. So it's as if we put could not together. The N goes on the end of could, and then we have the apostrophe where the O is, and then we keep the T. So, I could not go into school today. I couldn't go into school today. Again, you can write that yourself on a piece of paper or on a dry erase board. You can pause me if you need to. I don't want to go too fast for you. Let's look at the next one. Would not. Would not. Um, my dog would not go outside with me. Would not. Now I can turn that into, what do you think, when we put it together for a contraction? Wouldn't. You're right. Wouldn't. Again, keep the first word, would, and there's the OU lucky dog, 
or oh you lucky duck. Um, we're going to put the N here, the N, then we're going to get rid of the O and we're going to put an apostrophe in its place and then put the T. Wouldn't, wouldn't, my dog wouldn't go out with me today. Okay, next one, is not, is not. Um, today is Sunday, so the mail is not coming. So if I wanted to make a contraction of is not, what would it be? It would be isn't, isn't. Again, keep the first word. We're going to put the N at the end of the first word. We're getting rid of the O, putting in an apostrophe, and then putting the T. Isn't. The mail isn't coming today. It's Sunday. It doesn't come on Sundays. All right? Going on. Are not. Are not. We are not going on vacation. Are not. What do you think the contraction of, is of are not? If you said aren't, you're right. So I'm going to keep the first one. A-R-E, that's the first word, R. I'm going to put an N, that's the beginning letter of the second word. I'm going to get rid of the O and put the apostrophe and then put the T. All right, and that word is aren't. We aren't going on vacation this year. Now, I'm not going to take the time to do these, but you can practice them at home and maybe check with an adult and see if you did it right. But I am going to jump down here to the last one because it's a little bit tricky. In all of these, we keep the first word, and the second word changes just a little bit with the O being popped out. But this is a case where we do not keep the first word. It's a rule breaker. So this is will not. Will not. Um, the boy will not. Let's see, what would be a good... The boy will... The boy will not steal the candy. I mean, that's a good choice. You don't steal the candy, all right? The boy will not steal the candy. All right. How about the boy will not talk back to his parents? That's a little bit better, all right? Will not. The boy will not talk back to his parents. But if I want to make a contraction out of will not, oh boy, do we say won't? The boy won't talk back to his parents? Does that sound right to you? Nope. All right. It's won't. All right. W-O. We're not writing will. We're putting W-O and then the N from the second word and then the apostrophe and then the T. All right. So we're getting rid of that O. So this is one where we do not keep the first word and it changes. Will not goes to won't and it should sound right to us and if you'd like to work on these others at home that's fantastic that'd be good practice going on we're doing number four possessive pronouns oh golly we've been working on these too in the last couple of weeks pronouns are words that take the place of nouns so instead of saying Mrs. Eastman is teaching you a lesson, you could say she is teaching you a lesson. And she takes the place of Mrs. Eastman. Well, we also have nouns that are possessive. All right. This is Mrs. Eastman's basement. Something belongs to me. Mrs. Eastman's what? Basement. Right. Okay. So, in that respect, you would say then, this is her basement. And her is right here. All right. So, possessive pronouns show who or what owns something. And see, these are examples 
of possessive pronouns. My, your, her, his, its, their, our. They show possession of something, whether it is my car or your pet, all right, or his bike or her fancy dress or their uh, playground or, or swing set, all right? Something belongs to somebody. So these are called possessive pronouns. So I have an example here. Pam's bike is green. The subject of our sentence is, can you tell me, who is this about? You're right, it's about Pam. Now, Pam owns something. She possesses something. It's Pam's bike. It's not your bike or my bike or somebody else's bike. It's Pam's bike. All right? So that's a possessive noun. Now, can we pick one of these possessive pronouns that can take the place of Pam? Think about it. My, your, her, his, its, their, our. Which one can take the place of Pam? If you said her, you're correct, all right? We wouldn't call Pam a his or it's a your, no. It's her bike is green. So we need that capital H because it is the beginning word in the sentence. Her takes the place of Pam's. It's a possessive pronoun. Look here, let's try reading this sentence. This is blank house. You know what? We can put every single one of these in here and it would make sense. Let's do it. This is my house. This is your house. This is her house. This is his house. This is its house. This is their house. This is our house. Somebody possesses that house. And it can be anybody here, any of those possessive pronouns. I do want to throw in, this is tricky, a lot of adults make mistakes with this too, but it does not have an apostrophe S in it. There is no apostrophe. This is not a contraction of it is. We don't say um, this is it is his house. No, that doesn't make any sense, all right? So when we say it's as something belongs to it, we do not put in an apostrophe. That's tricky and it's hard to remember. Going on, we have proper nouns. Now, proper nouns are special nouns. Remember, nouns are people, places, or things. But proper nouns get capitalized because they're special certain places or people or things. So I put a couple examples here. I put the name of your school. What's the name of your school? All right, it's Northwood Elementary School. So we have capital N, capital E, and capital S. It's not just school. It's the name of your building. So it's Northwood Elementary School and they get capitalized. I put the name of our principal right here. Who's our principal? All right, Mr. Donaldson. And of course we know names get capitalized. Mr. is an abbreviation. We talked about that a different week ago, another week ago. All right, and Donaldson gets capitalized just like your first and last name get capitalized. Now, the thing this week is what they're talking about is that um, names of products get capitalized, all right? So, if you are buying Nike shoes, Nike is a specific brand, so it would get a capital N. If you are eating Captain Crunch cereal, then Captain and Crunch would get capitalized because Captain Crunch is a specific brand of cereal, all right? Um, in your book, it gave an example of, I like to eat Bunny's Best Carrots. Now, we've never heard of that brand before, but it's a brand name. So you would have to capitalize Bunny's 
best carrots. All right. Synonyms. Those are also mentioned this week. And synonyms are words that mean almost the same thing. They're kind of interchangeable and they make writing more interesting. So we don't keep using the same word over and over again. So some examples here would be caring and kind. Okay. The caring child gave her mother flowers. The kind child gave her mother flowers. They mean the same thing. Not the same word, not pronounced the same way, but have very close meanings. Okay? Look here. Happy and glad. So you can say, her mother was very happy. Her mother was very glad. Happy and glad mean about the same thing. So we need to know what synonyms mean. And I always tell my kids that it starts with an S. And synonyms and same both start with S. All right? They're words that mean about the same thing. All right, boy. Whew, we've done a lot of work today. Remember, you can start and stop this. You don't have to watch it all at once. And you can come back to it. I know it's a lot, but it's easier for me to make it all one time and then have you go back and reflect on it. So, this week our essential question is what do heroes do? And right now we have tons of heroes. We have heroes volunteering to make masks for people and they're sewing them in their basement. We have people volunteering at food banks and passing out food to hungry families. We have heroes who are in the medical field, who are on the front line helping these sick people and, and really putting their own health at risk. And so there's all different kinds of heroes. In our stories this week, there's a story about a man, and, and he lived a while ago. And I'm thinking you probably have read it already by the time you see this video. His name is Cesar Chavez. I have to practice that. And he was a migrant worker. He worked very hard on the farms and um, saw an injustice and saw that these farmers were working from sunup to sundown with backbreaking labor and little pay. And so he stood up for them in a peaceful way and he changed it so that they were treated fairly. And you probably read that story. And so he was a hero to those other migrant workers because he stood up for them and he got things changed. Another story you're going to read this week is um, about a lady named Bessie. And she, she grew up a while ago too, not present day, but she was African American and she really wanted to become a pilot. And people told her, no, you're a female, you're African American, you can't become a pilot. But she didn't listen to them. She followed her dreams. And she became a pilot. And then she started her own flight school. So she was really a hero to a lot of people who looked up to her. So think about that while you're reading your stories this week. Um, some of the other things we need to talk about, summarize, we've talked about that before, is just telling the important events that happened in the story. You can do the whole story, or you can just talk about one page at a time. What was really important about that page I just read, so that I am being an active reader before I continue. Sequence. That's really important this week, too. Sequence means the author is putting the events in order so they make sense to you. We wouldn't want to go to a movie and watch the end of it first, and then the middle of it, and then the beginning of it. It wouldn't make any sense. So it's how an author organizes what happens in this story. And a lot of times you can look for the words like first or next, then or last or finally. All right. So it's important to be able to put those events in order so they make sense to the person reading the story or listening to the story. And that's called sequence. Author's purpose is discussed. That's just why did the author write the story? Um, what was the purpose of it? I always used to talk about pie. 
The P is for persuade, to get you to do something. The I is to inform, and that's what that story is about Cesar, to inform you about his life and what he did and how he was a hero to others. Or just for entertainment, that's the E. Sometimes we read books for fun. I read books for fun all the time. Idioms. Idioms, we talked about that last week too, but I wanted to throw it back in. They're just um, like piece of cake, you know? This is a piece of cake. It just means it's easy to do. It doesn't mean you're really eating a piece of cake. Or um, in the story about the little girl once upon a baby brother, she likes to spin yarns or she spun yarns. That just meant she told stories. Not that she was doing anything with a yarn ball. All right. So remember what idioms are. Synonyms and antonyms, I talked about synonyms right here. Synonyms are words that mean the same thing or close to the same thing. Um, and antonyms, I just threw that in because that's opposites. Like hot and cold, day and night. Those are opposites. And not every word has an opposite. If I said tree, there's no opposite of tree. If I said sandwich, there's no opposite of sandwich. Okay, you maybe could come up with some synonyms for it, but not an opposite. Synonyms there probably are more of. Antonyms quite, not quite as many, but when you're young, you learn opposites, and that's what antonyms are. So, boys and girls, I know this was a lot to cover. And like I said, you can watch a little bit of it each day if you'd like. You don't have to watch it all at the same time. But it's important to keep our learning going. Um, I'm very, very proud of all of you for doing your work at home and getting it turned in. And um, I just am so pleased about that. And I really appreciate it. Okay? So, have fun reading the stories this week. Um, hope this helps you with some of the work you're going to be doing. And I'll be in touch again with some Screencastify videos, and we'll be doing some cursive. That's always fun. So take care, and thank you for doing your best.